Amen. May the words that are heard be thine and thou mine. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Since the Gospel's introduction via the incarnate Word, Jesus Christ, and through oral tradition, the kerygma, onto the written Gospels, four eventually were chosen to be canonized. And even to current hermeneutical exposition from pulpits like this one throughout the greater church, many scholars, clergy, laymen, have sought to define what is the redemptive moment. What is the redemptive moment? That is the moment when the intent of God's long-awaited and distinctly planned provision for the restoration of mankind to God in relationship do the salvific acts of Christ. When does that occur? On a personal individual basis. There are many descriptions or references to this sacramental moment. Some call it salvation, others atonement, while others conversion. But the necessity of redemption consistently fits all of those narratives. Now, raised evangelical, the condition, or excuse me, the connotation was redemption occurring in a singular, dramatic, metamorphosing moment, an event. A person was mysteriously, yet definitively altered, and in an instance, as if you were walking through a doorway, you were saved. On the outside of the door, you weren't saved. On the inside of the door, you were. Saved, not saved. Not saved, saved. Red light, green light. So, looking back, I understand why the conveyance was precarious. And many, including myself, often wondered if we had proceeded correctly. You know, did we do it the prescribed way? Did I, did I get it right? Now that I have grown older, it seems that redemption is not a singular event at all. But as a component of grace, is more of a spiritual becoming Grace is best understood as an umbrella term anyway, including many of the compassions of God, redemption, reconciliation, forgiveness, charity, benevolence, just to name a few. I can only speak for myself with any certainty, but these are graces that are in play constantly during my journey. They are ever presenting non-ceasing. Today's gospel account gives us an eyewitness view of a redemptive moment. What a, what a gift we have today. And it may offer some clarity with giving us a few characteristics of this universally required grace. By now in his ministry, Jesus had accumulated a large following. He was sort of a rock star. Literally, throngs of people were trailing him from town to town. And at each stopping point, they were increasing. It would make the huge galleries following popular golfers at a major golf tournament look minimal. He was like a famous celebrity coming to your town. And because he traveled on foot, there would be plenty of anticipation and preparation for his arrival. All the hotels would be booked up, you know, and 565 would be on a standstill. (laughs) Imagine the hype and the buildup. Thousands of people jockeying and jostling just to have a glimpse. Some sought association with Jesus for personal, political, societal gain, you know, photo ops. 
while others had more pressing intentions. Many believed if they might only touch him, they could be healed, cured of all sorts of illnesses. It was from amongst this category that our main character, Bartimaeus, resides. We aren't told much of him other than he is a blind beggar and the son of Timaeus. And we're not told much about Timaeus either. Possibly the audience to whom Mark was writing, maybe they knew him or them. Bartimaeus, despite the gaggle, has postured or positioned himself as close to the roadway where Christ was assumed to be passing through. And at the moment he sensed that Jesus was near, as the crowd was you know, growing in excited energy, he called out to him desperately and kept calling. Notice that immediately the self-appointed important people, the dignitary types, they attempt to quiet him. Hush! Quiet! Jesus doesn't have time for the likes of you. I mean, a beggar? Really, the only role allowed a blind person in the culture of that day, unjustly cast out, socially due to a physical impairment but a beggar really would Jesus have time for him nonetheless Bartimaeus calls out with even greater urgency son of David a messianic recognition son of David have mercy on me Mercy, another one of those grace terms. The first characteristic of a redemptive moment is a sense of urgency. One must feel that no other options would be sufficient. They have reached their final straw. They are at rock bottom. They have nowhere else to turn no longer believing the myth of self-sufficiency or self-denial, not concerned about perceptions or social ramifications. Who cares what the neighbors will think? One must need Christ to that extent. Notice what happens next. Jesus stops. Can you imagine the reaction in the crowd? He stops. In the midst of all that noise and confusion and chaos, he heard one diminutive voice. The next characteristic of a redemptive moment is that God is listening. It reminds me of the beginning of the book of Exodus when God hears the cries of Israel or Psalm 130, Out of the depths I have cried to Thee, O Lord. Sound familiar? Jesus then calls Bartimaeus to Him. And the once restricting bystanders now suddenly change their tone. Note here, Following the crowd is a slippery slope, for they shift as whimsically as the wind. Bartimaeus throws off his cloak and rushes to Christ in the darkness, just rushes to his voice. The next characteristic of a redemptive moment is that one must leave all behind to pursue redemption once perceived. It may take a while to comprehend that which has always been available, but once understood, it is the only objective. The cloak was probably all he had, his only worldly possession. Interestingly enough, 
in that moment, Jesus asks him, what would you have me do for you? It would seem like an obvious answer, right? Well, maybe not. You have to ask earnestly, honestly. You have to ask for redemption. Now, I imagine that Bartimaeus could have asked for many things, maybe anything. I wonder when was his last hot meal or warm bed or hot shower or new suit of clothing or shoes. It's been so long, Jesus, since I had anything. Instead, he asked to regain his sight regain his sight. I used to see clearly Jesus. There was a time that my vision was, it was unclouded. I could see who I was and where I was going, but now it's so unintelligible. Oh Jesus, I want to see again. Mark tells us that instantly he was healed. Did you notice that Bartimaeus is said to have immediately begun following Jesus on the way? Wouldn't you think that first he would have gone to tell his friends and family, you know, celebrated? Or that maybe he would have wanted to rub it in the faces of all those who had repressed him for so long? The final characteristic of a true redemptive moment is a change in one's direction. When we are impacted redemptively, we are forever changed. Just think, after the long darkness, the first face he saw was Jesus. Right there. He would never be the same again. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping. Thy presence, my light. Amen.